Hi, Richard from Digital Foundry here. Last year, the biggest surprise in PC graphics was NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 970, a cut-down version of the company's flagship GTX 980. Priced very attractively, it outperformed virtually all competition in the high-end graphics market. Perhaps not surprising, bearing in mind that essentially it's a slightly cut-down GTX 980. Or is it? It turns out that the specs provided to the press featured a number of errors. ROP count dropped from 64 to 56. L2 cache dropped from 2 megabytes to 1.75 megabytes, while overall bandwidth was re-rated at 192 gigabytes per second rather than 224 gigabytes per second. So an unfortunate error it seems then, but at the end of the day, performance is king and nothing could take away from the 970's excellent standing here. However, RAM is a concern. 3.5GB of the 4GB allocation runs at full speed, but the balance, 512MB, is considerably slower, operating at around 28GB per second. Now that's a massive drop. So the question is, does it actually matter? Well, we recently rebenched the GTX 970, adding in some SLI performance metrics and comparing both to the GTX 980 equivalents. And what you're seeing on screen are some of the edited highlights of the results, measured using FCAP frame rating at 2560 by 1440 resolution. Since the spec correction, there's been a lot of talk about micro stutter caused by utilization of the slower memory partition. But as you can see, in all of our tests here, the GTX 970 basically operates exactly as it should. It's essentially a slower version of the 980, whether it's operating as a single card or in SLI. Essentially, what you want to see in our frame rate and frame time graphs are parallel lines without any additional latency spikes on the 970 side. And by and large, that's exactly what you get. The aim with our benchmarks is to ramp up the settings as much as we can, but we do tend to avoid super sampling and multi sampling anti aliasing. SSAA is essentially a benchmark of a higher resolution, while MSAA on modern game engines, particularly those using deferred shading, is an enormous drain on system resources and, to be honest, we don't recommend it for gameplay. In some cases, such as Far Cry 4 for example, MSAA just doesn't work properly, producing results that are actually visually worse than post-process anti-aliasing alternatives. So far, so good. The GTX 970 aces all the tests we can throw at it. In the here and now, we still have no problem at all recommending this card, particularly factoring its excellent overclocking credentials. But that partition of slower RAM is a concern. We wanted to stress test the GPU to its limits, and to test whether the slow memory really is a problem. At this point, it's worth pointing out that to do so required removing compute as a potential bottleneck, so we went for an SLI setup. We also mirrored the tests with the GTX 980. There have been some complaints about stutter on the 970, but it's not a fault of the paired back memory subsystem if we find that the 980 performs in exactly the same way. So it turns out that we really had to push things to really make any kind of dent in the system. First up, here's Shadow of Mordor on our SLI setups, running at max settings with both high and ultra textures. You'll note that there's more stutter on both 970 and 980 using ultra textures. That would be because developer Monolith recommends a whopping great 6GB of video RAM for ultra textures, and that's just with a 1080p frame buffer. Here, not only are we running at 2516x1440, we're also super sampling down from 4K. It was the only way that we could guarantee full 4GB utilization. But we may well be paging into system DDR3 memory too, since the 980 is also affected in some places. Again, the 970 seems to be working as the slower 980 we would expect it to be, except that at the end of this sequence, spinning around on the spot causes big latency spikes on the cheaper card that are much less of an issue on the 980. Is this evidence that the memory on 970 isn't up to scratch? Well, all that we've proved really is that the memory subsystems here are different. You'll note that the situation improves dramatically dropping down to high textures, as it should, as that's the setting recommended by the developer. However, our next test does produce a scenario where the 970's memory system does appear to falter. Here we're rerunning our Assassin's Creed Unity benchmark sequence, again with SLI, and we're operating at 2516 by 1440 on ultra-high settings, which means 4x MSAA. Here we're testing GTX 980 SLI up against two separate benchmark runs on the 970, along with a final run where we've swapped out 4x MSAA on the 970 for 2x MFAA, NVIDIA's brand new anti-aliasing system. Here, the results show much more in the way of noticeable stutter on both of the GTX 970 runs, 
This is virtually eliminated on the final MFAA run, but that comes at the expense of a big, big hit to overall performance. MSAA is hugely bandwidth intensive and is massively impactful to overall performance on both cards, but these are ultra high settings and we would hope that the GTX 970 wouldn't have the latency spikes seen here on both recorded runs, especially as they're not really an issue on the 980. So this is an extreme test for sure, it would be a complete write-off on a single card, but it does perhaps suggest scenarios where the split RAM partition on GTX 970 won't be able to match the full 4GB of full speed memory found on the 980. However, while not quite as extreme as the Shadow of Mordor test, we still wouldn't want to game this way. ACU is a great example of the kind of engine that really doesn't play nice with MSAA, and whether we're using GTX 970 or 980, we'd still recommend using post-process anti-aliasing. In this scenario, a 970 or 980 SLI setup gives you pretty much a locked 60 FPS at 1440p if you have VSync engaged, and the results on this game are simply breathtaking. So we've had to go to extreme measures to show tangible differences between the 970 and the 980 in terms of latency spikes and whatnot. But the real question here is whether games are going to come along with bandwidth intensive data that taps into the slower area of RAM on the cheaper card and causes problems. That's something we can't answer right now, and it's out of developer hands too. It's down to Nvidia's driver team to make sure the right data goes into the right area of memory. So based on our testing, would we recommend the GTX 970 any less than when we reviewed it? Well, for those looking to SLI two or three cards together and really push their gaming to extremes, the results here may give you pause. But for high-end gaming at 1080p or 1440p, especially on a single card, we'd still rate it as an excellent product overall. Anyway, that's where we are for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.